recording? Yeah, you can see the timer. Oh, and... okay. Okay. I'll cut that part. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try to teach you or show you how I do my nail trimmings. Um, first thing I do is I make sure that I, I like to keep the pads clear of hair and, um, so that you can see there's a lot of ear or a lot of hair here in between the pads. It collects dirt and grime and it holds in moisture. I've seen some people that you never trim out the, the pads and the hair gets really long and it can get matted up and there can be sores underneath of it. Um, plus, you know, it just kind of. Especially if you have slippery floors, it can uh, affect their traction on slippery floors. So I always clear out the hair on the pads of the feet. And I use a 30 blade. And I kind of hold the foot in my palm and I kind of take the hair up to the, you'll run into the back of the nails. Turn it around and I'll go back up the other way. And just remember that anytime if you're going against the lay of the hair, you're gonna get a, a shorter, smoother cut than if you're going with the lay of the hair. So I clean all that out so that the hair is out. And then I'm going to now one thing. <clears throat> With the hair, when when you're when you're just clipping your hair, you don't really have to worry about too much. If you're using the Dremel, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, you have to make sure you kind of keep this hair all pulled back so that it doesn't get caught in the Dremel. I you can wet the hair; it might help keep it up a little bit better. Which her hair is a little bit damp because she's out in the snow. And then um, if you I've seen some people that will take old pantyhose or knee highs and they'll push the nails in through through those knee highs and that way they're sticking out but it's holding the hair back. One thing you got to be careful with the Dremel is as it's rotating if you if it catches the hair it can pull the hair out and it can be really uncomfortable for the for the dog. When I first started first time very first time I ever used a Dremel it was a bad experience for me and the dog, and I swore off the Dremel and swore I'd never use one again. Um, the hair between her toes got caught in the Dremel, and it pulled it all the way up to the skin. The hair didn't rip out. It just pulled the Dremel up to the skin, and, um, and it, I mean, it stopped the Dremel, but it stopped it tight in between her toes, and I pretty much had to cut it out with scissors. So that was not a fun experience for me or the dog, and I swore I'd never use Dremel again. That was it. I was done. And it took me years to finally decide to give the Dremel a try again. Um, so you just have to be aware of the hair and where it's at and try to keep it pulled back so that it doesn't accidentally catch in your Dremel. So um, first thing I do is I always take, okay, well, so if you use the Dremel on a weekly basis, you probably never need to use clippers. But most people, me included, you know, they're lucky if their nails get trimmed every four or six weeks. And in that case, you can use just the Dremel, but it's going to take you, it might take you a lot longer. And, um, and I'm not sure if that Dremel doesn't create heat as it's, you know, as it's sanding down on that nail, it could create heat. And if you're getting close to the quick, it might be uncomfortable and it just causes a lot more dust. So I have a tendency to take the clippers down, uh, take the tips off with the clippers and then come back with the Dremel. And another thing, I don't know if you can see, come around to the front. A reason to keep them, now see these aren't that, they're not, these aren't quite as bad, but I have seen some, you can see these are just, just off the ground. Um, you know, if you let them get too long, here's the front, probably. The backs don't usually do it as bad. See the fronts there, and you can see how the nail is actually touching the ground. That's not good for them. It's actually bad for their joints. If you think about, you know, if 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 your toes, you know, if your, your toes, your nails are touching the ground, 
And a lot of times, like, these are just touching, so they're not doing too bad. But if they get much longer than this, they're actually going to start causing the whole toe and joint to round over from the pressure on the floor. And if you do that, you know, for their entire lives, they can get arthritis in their toes. It causes joint pain. Um, you know, it's just, you're better off if you can keep them shorter. Now, I'm not, you get on some of these Facebook groups about nail trimming, and they, like, take them down to nubs. They, they've got almost nothing there. I don't know that I completely agree with that either. And, and the way you do that is, you know, you basically are dremeling, Dremeling them back all as far as you can on a weekly or, or twice weekly basis. And, and if you keep just barely exposing that quick, then the quick will recede. So like if you have a dog that's been left go too long and the quick has actually grown out, you know, it's painful for them to just cut the quick and let it bleed out and recede that way. So you're better off to just dremel every week and keep that quick exposed so, and it'll it'll slowly recede on its own um but there's people that'll do that on a regular basis with nails that are already in normal length and they get them back to where there's just these itty bitty tiny little nubs and i don't know that i completely agree with that either because you know the nails do have a purpose they dig into the ground when they're running you know th there's a there's a purpose to those nails so i don't believe in having them super duper tiny but you don't want them so long that they're hitting the ground all the time um, especially, you know, if they're outside, yeah, the ground has more give, it'll go down in the dirt some and everything, but uh, you know, a lot of these dogs are hanging out in the house. Um, a lot of people have hard tile or linoleum floors and, you know, they're constantly hitting on that all the time. And so that's, that can cause issues with, with the joints in the foot. So, um, and it's usually more with the front foot than with the back foot. So I've got the hair out here, and whenever you look at the bottom of the nail, you can see that teardrop. And this teardrop is pretty much all extra growth that you don't need. But when you cut, so if you cut, you don't want to cut straight up and down. You usually want to leave it more at an angle. And you want to angle this way and not this way. So you angle this way where you're kind of putting the clippers at the same angle like on the on the bottom of the of the toe pad and you're kind of following that angle and I'll take them to the bottom of that teardrop and I'm gonna cut and that was extra that was all extra stuff and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna slowly kind of go back and forth side to side and just take little slivers off and then I'm going to take a little bit more on the toe. And I just take little bits at a time off. You know, you don't want to cut too much at once because then if you end up cutting and making them bleed, toes bleed really bad and the dog is very unhappy. So I've taken the tip off there and hers are wet so you can't really see. A lot of times, you know, if they're a dry foot, they'll be kind of white or gray and flaky. And then as you're getting close to the quick, you'll get kind of a black center. And that's how you know that you're getting close and you kind of want to stop and go to the um, switch over to the Dremel. Um, I'll go ahead and do a second toe just to show. Again, the teardrop, base of the teardrop, cut and then come back in side to side and take a little bit more and just take a little bit at a time. And a little bit of the toe and just very slowly and easily back and forth. Now, I could go further. I can tell that I can go further, but for the, for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the Dremel. So this is my Dremel. Cordless ones are nice, but then, you know, if the battery dies and you don't have them charged and you're in the middle of the dog, it just kind of really sucks, especially if you're doing somebody else's dog that needs to go home and you don't have time to let it charge. So I'm using a corded Dremel, and then this is the bit that I have on it. You can use 
just the brown sanding wheels that come in the pack. And for just one dog, they'll probably last you quite a while. I, I've tried the black ones seem to lose their grit a lot faster than the brown ones. So I tend to use the brown ones and I use those for a long time. I finally broke down and switched to this. This is a diamond grit metal head. Um, this is specifically marketed for doing dog nails. I will try to find the link and post it for where I bought it. I think it cost about $60, but this is supposed to like last my lifetime. So if that's the case, $60 is well worth it to me to not have to constantly be fighting to change out those little sanding wheel heads. Um, there's another company called Whitman's that has created something like this. They might have been the first people, I don't know. And um, I think it's called a diamond groove and it's a, it's a diamond, diamond grit one. Um, they run about $150 and I know people that have them and they say that they work really good. I've never used one so I can't give a comparison to this as to whether or not it works any better um, for the money. And then I have heard from people, although I haven't searched, I've heard some people say that you can find something like this on Amazon for like 15, 20 bucks. So you can just search for it if you want. I do like this because it's rounded. It's rounded on the edges so it makes it easier to, to round off the foot. And then it also does have the diamond grit on the, the, the tip here so that you can, you know, you could actually put the tip into that top to help grind it down and smooth it so okay. so again I want to pull all this pull the hair up as much as I can and then I grab whichever toe I'm wanting to work on I grab the toe and the nail the base of the nail to hold it and then I tend to come in and start at the bottom first and I take a little bit off here and this helps me be able to see more where my quick is going to be. So you can see where it's starting to get darker. See that dark part in the center? That's actually the tip of the quick. So I don't want to go any further than that. And then where the majority of your length comes from is actually the top of the nail. So I will grind on the top of the nail here. And with this one, I just kind of go back and forth because it's already rounded. And I take the top of this nail off. And I can come around and I can change it. And I can take a little bit off this, the very front this way. Always trying to keep in mind where the hair is and making sure that I don't have a bunch of stray hair sticking out, which can be hard in this breed unless you're taking all the hair off and doing poodle feet. Um, okay. So that's pretty much as far as I'm going to go. And I can kind of feel, I can feel that it's rounded, that it's not jagged, it's not pointy. And that's as far as I'm going to go on that on that toenail. I'm going to go ahead and do this one just to show. Now, of course, if you have a dog that hates having their nails done, this can be really difficult. If you don't have a grooming table, this can be difficult. Um, you know, having a small dog down on the ground and trying to do this and keep them standing still, it's, it's just harder on everybody. Um, you can, the way I was used to do it, but it got to the point where it was just too hard on my back, if I would sit on the ground and... I would sit on the ground with my legs out and I would flip the dog over on their back and hold them between my legs. Now, all of my dogs, I can do that pretty easily. Um, you know, we have the relationship, they trust me, they see me all the time, and I try to make it to where I can always flip my dogs. 
Um, so very few of my dogs will actually fight with me on that. They give in to it and they're like, yeah, whatever, okay. And so then they're flipped over on their backs. This isn't my dog, so I don't know if she'd let me flip, me, flip her, and I've never flipped her. Um, you know, I hold them between my legs, and, you know, and then it's easy for me to see the underside of the nails, and I would clip, and then I would come back, and I could dremel that way. Um, the only problem with that is that then I'm doing a lot of this. And when I'm doing this all the time with lots of dogs, it was just starting to hurt my back way too much. So then I switched to doing them on the grooming table. Um, it was actually easier to see and work on the dogs with them this way, but it was just a lot harder on my back. So I switched to doing them on the grooming table. So that, but if you have a dog that will let you flip them and is happy to do that for you, then, you know, if it's easy enough for you, then it's, then that's perfectly acceptable to do it that way for the dog. Um, and then it's just keeping an angle that's comfortable for them. It, I'm usually more uncomfortable than they are. <laughs> I, sometimes they might act like I'm making them uncomfortable. Um, but I always try really hard to keep things in line. You know, I'm not cranking them out too much or anything. You know, I try to keep them in line with their body, with the way their joints actually normally flow. Um, you know, and, and the same thing, you know, I'll do the same thing over here. And I, on the back end, I have a tendency to reach underneath to support them to do the foot that's closest to me. Um, otherwise you have a tendency to crank them out too far. So I keep them in close I'm going to do it that way. The, the, their left front foot and I'm right handed. So it's easier for me. Um, you know, I stay close to the dog and I put my hand between their front legs to pick up the foot. And then again, I try to keep it close to their, to their body as close as I can. Um, but of course when you're doing this front foot, and you're trying to keep it close to their body, You'll, when, especially when you're using the Dremel, if they have a long skirt, it's another consideration that you have to make sure, you know, you're not just worried about the, the hair on the foot that you're working with. You gotta make sure that you don't accidentally get too close to the hair on the elbow or the hair on the skirt with the Dremel and have that get sucked in. Um, and then for me, on, the, on their right foot, front foot, it's easiest for me to pull them in close to my chest and then I will have it say, I usually put my foot here, or my, my arm here, because otherwise they want to turn around and I've had them catch their beards in the Dremel. Um, so I put my arm to block their head so that they can't come around. And then two, if I do something that makes them uncomfortable and you have a dog that's, that's kind of has a tendency to snap, if my arm's in the way, they, they're they really not going to catch anything. Like they're, it's going to hit their, their jaw is going to hit me before their teeth can get me usually. And then I pick up the foot here and I lean over and I see from this way. Now I have, um, I have a dog that I do. He went to another groomer for many years before he ever came to me. And when he came to me, like he was already horrible about his, his feet. I have to muzzle him. He screams and cries as like I can trim the hair in his feet I can do anything I want to do grooming wise as soon as I pick up the nail clippers or the dremel he loses his mind and he I, I keep all my windows and my door shut because the neighbors probably think I'm killing him it's between a growl don't touch me and it escalates to a scream oh my god like he's he's just he's dying I go as well as I can. Some days are better than others. And usually I can get his back feet pretty good. On his good days, I can get through his back feet without an issue. And I can usually even get his front foot okay. But he hates when I do this one. And I think part of the reason he hates this one so much is because I'm, he doesn't like me holding him this way. But it's the only way I can do it. If I try to come around to the other side and do it, my left-handed way, like I just can't, I just can't do it. So he has to suffer through that one foot. Um, some days they'll bring him and it doesn't matter. He's bad for all four feet. Other days he comes and I can get through some of it without an issue and then all of a sudden he'll decide it's a bad idea. Um, and he's been like that since I started grooming him and, I, you know, I don't know if he just had really bad experiences with other groomers. Um, it, it, from day one, he's been difficult. He's gotten easier for me, um, but he'll never be an easy dog to do. Once they get that where they're bad about their feet, 
you're probably never going to fix it. Um, it's just, at least I'll never fix it in the time period that I have. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not here to train while I'm doing this. I, my job is to get it done so that they can leave and go home. And I try to make it as good and as easy as possible, but I'm not going to sit here for three hours and baby them and feed them treats and, you know, and, and like, that's just not me. That's not my job. In my opinion, it's the owner's job to make them where their feet can be handled. But most owners just can't and won't do it. Um, and then, like I said, with this, with that particular dog, you know, he's six or seven years old his mind is set that it's an awful experience and and I honestly don't think that there would ever be anything that you could do. All the treats in the world are not going to teach that dog that it's okay to handle his feet. Um, but that's my opinion. So your best bet is to start off good. Make sure when you get your puppies that you're messing with their feet and it's a good thing. You know, I always, I want to make it a good experience, but I'm not huge on treats. I, I am kind of a, a tough love, suck it up and deal with it, and this has to be done. So maybe I'm not the best person to, to think about that. But, um, you know, in, in my mind, it's for their health. It's for their own good. We're going to get it done, and we're going to get it done in the easiest, fastest way possible. But, you know, it has to be done. There's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The same goes with brushing them and getting knots out and... You know, I don't weenie whine and pussyfoot around my dogs. It, if it needs to be done, it, it gets done. Whether they like it or not, and if it means I have to have somebody else come in and hold them, it's getting done. If I have to put a muzzle on them, which my dogs, I don't, I don't have to. But sometimes when, when other people bring their dogs, there's some dogs, you know, I'll schedule whenever I know my husband's home because I know he's going to have to hold them. Um, there's some dogs that I just automatically put a muzzle on them whenever I know I'm doing something because I know they're going to try to bite me. Um, so, but that's just the way I do things and I, I'm, I don't sugarcoat anything and I want it all to be a good experience, but I'm not going to sit here and baby them either. So, but that's just me. So hopefully this was helpful. If anybody has any questions, you can ask and I'll try my best and there we go. Have a good day.